good stuff. Now imagine fighting an enemy you can't see or touch. Extra life. Play games. Heal kids. Hey kids, welcome back to the show. And I just want to have a moment with you about myself. I want to talk to you guys about something that's pretty important that I feel like it's important to talk about. Now, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a pirate. Pi well, I look like a pirate. But really, I consider myself a privateer. A privateer, actually. Now, you might not know, what's a privateer? Well, a privateer was hired by the government to take the gold from all the bad ships and give it to all the good people and all the good, and give it to the communities and everything like that. Now, a lot of people might not know about privateers because it's kind of hidden in history and most people just aren't that interested. And they're more interested in the, the violence and the pirates and everything like that. But I want to show and I want to represent why I why I want to wear this and really show the, the goodness of, of privateers and everything like that. And really sort of and try to spread love and everything like that. So there was also I want to talk about there was a really famous privateer named Sir, Sir Francis Drake. And he was a really he was a famous privateer. And he hot and he had he helped all sorts of people in communities and a fun fact. He was honored by Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, I didn't even know that. So that's a really good, that's a really interesting fact about that. So thank you, and thank you. And so don't go anywhere, we got some fun stuff coming up. show you some stuff about the USS Constellation. Take a look at this. USS Constellation. There's a grand lady in Baltimore who has taken her rightful place as the Inner Harbor's Crown Constellation Century of Service embraced the ages of sail, steam, gas, diesel, and nuclear power. Imagine that, launched in 1854 and still afloat. Even more exciting, visitors can come aboard Constellation and explore to their heart's content. On board Constellation, history comes alive as visitors touch, feel, and experience what life was like for sailors during the Civil War. 
just bring your imagination. The second of three U.S. Navy vessels to carry the same venerable name. The first, the Frigate Constellation, was built right here in Baltimore at Harris Creek and launched in 1797. Known as the Yankee Racehorse, the Frigate Constellation was one of the first six ships built by the United States Navy. The ship you see here, the Sloop of War Constellation, was built at the Gosport Navy Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia and launched in 1854. But it's the Sloop of War Constellation that's here in Baltimore today and the Chesapeake Bay has always been central to her story. Did you enjoy that? Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Now, this is the harbor, the National Harbor. And this is where there's a lot of history down here, especially where the ship is. So if you want to see the ship, come down to the National Harbor. And you can see a lot of views and everything. They got, they got a, 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 a museum over there. And they got boats over here. And they got food and everything. So make sure you check it out. Baltimore's opening up, folks. And come down and see the wonderful sights on the harbor. You won't, you won't regret it. Oh look, we're being taped. <laughs> Captain Baltimore, come on. <laughs> and I'm being taped right now. <laughs> wow. That was cool. Yeah. Can you send us a copy? <laughs> Send it to the Constellation! Yes. So that's the Little Harbor cruise ship right there. And they go and they, they sail and they go and explore, explore the seas and everything like that. And it sounds really uh, relaxing and something that I might want to enjoy and, and, and get on. So check it out. Hey, Baltimore! <laughs> Look at all the people. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, see, he's waving back at you. Hey. <laughs> A sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, 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 and all that he could see, 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 is the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see, see. He could see, uh, he could see, all he could see was the bottom of the deep sea. A sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, see, see. What could he could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea. A sailor went to do up the wop to see what he could do up the wop, and all that he could do up the wop is the bottom of the deep blue. Do up the wop. A sailor went to shake, shake, shake to see what he could shake, 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 and all that he could shake, shake, shake was the bottom of the deep blue. Shake, shake, shake. shake. So kids, I hope you're having fun on the Captain Baltimore show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It started small. Then, it went global. Gamers from North America. Coming together with gamers from all around the world. From all walks of life. Getting together to play games for 24 hours. And raise money to help cure sick kids. With all funds raised, staying local with Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and Partner Hospitals internationally. For more info or to sign up, visit www.extra-life.org. Hi, welcome back. I'm Captain Baltimore, and I'm here with two young men here. And I want to talk about more of a serious note about growing up and being two, you know, young men in this society. Um, I know that it can be kind of 
tough, you know, trying to figure your way out in, you know, life and especially being men and kind of, kind of having to be, you know, strong and tough and can't show most emotion and stuff like that. So I wanted to ask you, you know, whoever wants to answer first, how, um, how is it um, growing up um, being, you know, a young man? What's your, been, been your honest experience with that? So. Uh, the whole not showing emotion thing has been a super big problem for me specifically, but I have seen it yeah. like affect people, mm -hmm. and it's just it's heartbreaking to look at. Yeah, because they feel like they can't show it, and mm -hmm. they just keep it bottled up. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Very important. It's good. It's very important to show emotion and everything. Uh, what about you, Uh Me growing up as a young man, it's it's been all right. But yeah. sometimes it is tough because of the whole showing emotion thing mm -hmm. and what people think and stuff. Yeah. But otherwise, it's been alright. But I hope that gets better. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know what, what they were talking, what they were saying about the whole emotion thing. That I personally, um, I've always been comfortable showing my emotion and everything like that because I think it's important, you know, to really express yourself and and not have it bottled up because you know I feel like if you do that. Then it's not. It's, it's first of all, it's not good for your mental health and well-being, and so that's really important. Okay. So, do you have um, any advice for you know young uh, people and you know men growing up in like in the society? I mean, I would just have to say that emotion is important. Yeah. Mainly to let people know how you feel about certain things, mm -hmm. because if they don't have your opinion, they don't know what you think. They don't know. Really agree with. Right, right. Now that's huge. I, I agree with that completely. Uh, what about you? I would say just be yourself and express yourself to people. Mm -hmm. Don't fall in your emotions because it just leads to anxiety. You should just let it out. Right, right. Yeah, that's huge. I, I agree with that too. Um, our advice that I want to give is really, I'm really big on really being confident in yourself and really not letting people dictate who you are and choosing who you should be. Because there's a lot of um, people out there that want to distract you and show you off your course and everything. And I really want to make the main focus that if you really focus on yourself and where you're going, then you can do whatever you want. So um, I want to talk about another big topic that's important, um, bullying, you know. I'm sure, you know, y'all heard about it, y'all seen it, y'all, you know, might have even experienced some, but, um, but if, if, I would, if there's any advice that you want to give on, you know, how to deal with bullies or anything like that, you know, feel free to um, um, express that. But I, I'm going to speak first on that with, um, you know, with bullying is, I've seen it. I've um, even had to deal with it, you know, myself when I was in school. Um, and, you know, it's really, now that I'm older and a, an adult, I've really learned that, that, you can learn, you can learn a lot from bullying, but it's really helped me be confident, you know, because when I was younger, you didn't really, you, it's hard to see that because you didn't really, you would just see, you know, them messing, you know, or messing with somebody else and you didn't really know how to, you know, how to, how to interact and do that. But now that, you know, you grow up and you learn, you know, how to deal with, with bullies and stuff like that, it can really help you in your, in your, life and later on in life and know what to do and how to navigate so you know that's that's what I've learned from uh, that so that's it. I have seen it and uh, I see it I automatically hate the person that's doing it and then they have a problem at home that makes me hate them less and but it's not really an excuse it's more of a reason and I really don't know how to feel about that uh, it's really just you look at kids who do bully people and you realize that there's sometimes a problem at home or they have some issue just with themselves and it's pressured on them by society that, and it changes them and makes, I mean, it kind of makes them do these things. I have seen bullying many times and I do hate the person that bullies but like Aaron said, they are probably are going through something at home. But so I would say you just, you try to understand the situation and try to convince them to stop. Like, you don't have to believe other people just because something's happening to you. You should try to make other people feel better so that they don't have to go what you're going through. Yeah, okay. So, I'm, um, 
I'm really glad that you two have um, come and, you know, with Captain Baltimore and everything like that. Um, and really, you know, show your skills and everything. And um, I'm really excited for you guys. And so, you know, we, you know, you guys, we enjoy having fun here at the Captain Baltimore show. Um, and, you know, I, you know, so I'm really glad that you guys are in show business with me and putting your energies in a positive place. That's really important. So, so thanks, thanks for being here today. And uh, we'll be right back. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, in the bottom of a 16 man on a dead man's chest. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, in the bottom of a 16 man on a dead man's chest. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, in the bottom of a 16 man on a dead man's chest. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, in the bottom of a 16 man on a dead man's chest. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, in the bottom of a Oh, look who I see. What do you do when you're in a rowboat? You row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Mary, 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 life is done as me. Whoa, 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 you go safely down the stream. Mary, 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 life is fun as me. Hey, Captain Baltimore, what's a captain's favorite type of cookie? I don't know. Ships ahoy! Oh. <laughs> hey, Captain Baltimore. Yeah. What do you call a pirate with two eyes and two legs? No. What do you call a pirate with two eyes and two legs? A oh, Wookiee? <laughs> oh, that is funny. Hey, Captain Baltimore. Yeah. Why couldn't the pirate play cards? Why? Because he was standing on the deck. Oh, <laughs> on the deck. Oh, I get it. Hey, Captain Baltimore. Yeah. Why does it take forever so long to learn the alphabet? Why? Because it gets stuck at sea. Oh, stuck at sea. Oh, I got it. Man, these are some clever pirates I got here. All right, so if you have any jokes at home, send them over to the Captain Baltimore Show. Hi, right, kids, we're here on the USS Constellation here at the Baltimore Show. We'll be right back. USS Constellation. There's a grand lady in Baltimore who has taken her rightful place as the Inner Harbor's crown jewel in the heart of the Chesapeake Bay. Runs into the 1860s and you are back in time on the Constellation learning what it was like to be here. People come on board and they, they get touched by this 
by this walking through history that they're able to do and they're able to, to see the hammocks and see the officer's wardroom and, and sit in the captain's cabin and have this whole immersive experience that you're never going to get at most types of museums. So this is a really wonderful experience for them and they have no idea what they're, what they're missing out on and then they come on board and they keep coming back. We fire the cannon, turn the capstan, and ring the bell daily. And we recommend the free self-guided audio tour, which comes in two flavors. One perfect for children, the other for adults. Welcome aboard USS Constellation, and enjoy your visit to the historic sites of the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. Welcome back to the Captain Baltimore Show. I'm here with my first mates. <laughs> and we're on board the USS Constellation. A sailor! He went to shake, shake, shake to see what he could shake, shake, shake. But all that he could shake, shake, shake was the bottom of the sea. Shake, shake, shake. A sailor went to do wop de wop to see what he could do wop de wop. All that he could do wop de wop was the bottom of the deep do wop de wop. Constellation. This is me, Mates. Kiara. Annabelle. Quincy. Carmen. So, kids, I hope you're having fun on the Captain Baltimore show. Now, we're on a whale watch. Oh, you see that? Darcy Glows. Oh! So, what do y'all know about whales? Y'all know how big they are? Y'all know how, how big and how their lifespans are? Anything? No? All I know is I'm okay. Well, I, well, since I've been at sea for a while and I've seen plenty of whales, I know they're really big and they have a really uh, snout and where they shoot water out the, out the top and they live for hundreds of years. And some of them are way bigger than dinosaurs and all like that. So, uh, yeah, that's all I know. And I, I've also hunted one. And I've also, I was at battle one time and also I, I, I caught one. And we had it for dinner. It was really good. Oh, oh I was just kidding. I don't eat meat. We eat fish. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, it comes to Baltimore because a whale is a mammal. Oh, a mammal. Oh, I got that. Thank you. Thank you, my pirate mighty. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You ought to stop fishing in the ice like that. The size of that hole is causing climate change. How do you figure that out? Well, you've been fishing like that for as long as I can remember and climate change is happening, so that must be causing it. No, 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 that's not causing climate change. Climate change is caused by fishing with synthetic lines like that one you've got. No, I don't think that's it. I think it's your position. See, you're facing east. You need to not be facing east. Not be facing east? That sounds a bit far-fetched. I think it's the blue hat you're wearing that's causing climate change. My blue hat? Yeah, it's clear. Well, maybe not, but... What else could possibly be causing climate change? Hmm. Maybe it's the humans. The humans? Yeah. No, 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 no. Do you think for one moment that they would allow that to happen to us? Oh, it's got to be the hats then. Yeah, it must be the hats. Welcome back. Here we got some... got my two powies here and they got some... something to say, so... Hey, Captain Baltimore. Yeah. What's a captain's favorite subject? What is a captain's favorite subject? Archaeology. Oh, <laughs> smart, clever. What hey, about captain you? Baltimore. Yes. What do you call a dog's uh, What do you call a dog's uh, An iPad. An iPad. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Hey, Captain Baltimore. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Garden. Garden? Garden the treasure. Oh. Guarding the treasure, there we go. We gotta guard our treasure for sure. <laughs> All right, we had a great lot of fun here at the Captain Baltimore Show. I'm gonna end it off with your name? Kiara. 
Annabelle. Quincy. Carmen. And I'm Captain Baltimore. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey, we're on a ship. What songs do you know that take place on a ship? How about Row, Row, Row Your Boat? Sure. Row, Row, Row Your Boat, gently like the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Six million men on a dead man's chest. Ho, 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 and a bowl of rum. Six million men on a dead man's chest. Ho, 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 and a bowl of rum. Six million men on a dead man's chest. Ho, 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 and a bowl of rum. Six million men on a dead man's chest. Ho, 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 and a bowl of rum. Six million men on a dead man's chest. Ho, ho, 